Just a, this is just a technicality that it takes two equivalents of lithium um, to uh, react with one equivalent of this because we need one lithium for the bromine. Here we only need one magnesium. Do you have to have the plus and minus which you write? Uh, no, you could write it like this. We know that usually we like to draw the charges for ionic bonds, but that doesn't matter here because these are not going to react with anything. So yeah, um, you could draw it either way. So in fact, maybe it would have been better. Since these are not going to do any reactions, since we're going to now proceed to completely ignore these, you can just write it like this. Okay. Now, um, is this a ionic or a covalent bond? Ionic. Why would you say ionic? Because it acts the same. Yeah. How do we know it's ionic in general? Are these from the same side of the periodic table or opposite? Opposite. Yeah, opposite. Uh, I don't know whether this is purely ionic or partially or covalent or not, but it certainly is most convenient to draw it as ionic, just like we would for a Grignard. So we should do the same thing and draw it as ionic, just like we would for a Grignard. So let's go ahead and do that. I think always want you to write in the solvent. I'm just sometimes lazy and I leave it out. And also, I haven't memorized all the solvents sometimes, so maybe I, maybe I try to pretend. So, uh, yeah. So, um, but this would again be ether uh, or any other aprotic solvent. You would again want to use an aprotic solvent. Um, why aprotic? What would be wrong with a protic solvent? Well, it would protonate this again. Okay, so yeah, actually uh, that's a bad habit I have of not writing the solvent sometimes. Uh, I should be writing the solvent more because uh, some instructors care about that. Yours does. What would the solvent be for the SOCO3? I don't know. Yeah, you can look that up in the textbook. I don't know what the solvent, uh, what a common solvent would be for that. Um, probably an aprotic solvent would work fine. I'd probably want to use an aprotic solvent for that too. Okay, so uh, let's see here, we've got, uh, oh, so again, the big mistake is don't put the negative charge here. There's no carbon here. First, erase the covalent bond, and then put in the charges. Remember, these are the same thing. This is just a more useful way to write it. So we'll write it in that more useful way here. So here's the most useful way to draw the products from this. And then the very next thing you would do is, um, who's the reactive atom now? The carbon. And is it a head or a tail? Tail. So you should immediately, whoops. Huh? SOCl2, it's pyridine. It's what? Pyridine. Pyridine is actually not the solvent, it's just a base. Um, so when you use SOCl2, that tends to generate a little bit of acid. So it, it help, it's helpful to put in a little base uh, to neutralize that. There must be some other solvent. Or, or actually, no, 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 no mistake, maybe uh, pyridine is, uh, maybe they're using pyridine as the solvent and as a base. So, uh, yeah, so um, I don't know about that. I'd have to, to look it up here. Not, even here, in some cases, they're not showing the solvent, right? Like, so sometimes it's not easy to tell. Okay. Okay, so one role of the pyridine there is to act as a base. Or maybe it can act as, as a solvent as well. I don't know. This can, you can look all this up in the textbook. All right. Uh, where was I? We had this. You said the, car the negative carbon is reactive. Oh, as soon as you generate these carb anions, you should immediately draw that they're at the tail of an arrow. Anytime we have this carb anion, we know it's at the tail of the arrow. The only question is who goes at the head. Um, you don't need to know both the head and the tail before you can start drawing the arrow. Once you know one part, draw in that one part. So anytime you're making these, you turn them ionic and immediately put them at the tail, and that will tell you what your next step is. Now we just have to ask who goes at the head. So that's a good problem solving technique. Well, it depends what you want in the end. Yeah, it depends yeah. what you add, and it depends who else is in the mix. All right, so that was a rhetorical question. But you would look for who, who else you could put at the head here. Now, um, what's the name of this type of compound? Grignard. Yeah, this is a Grignard. What's the name of this type of compound? Alkalithium. Right, do you see how logical that name is? Why is that so logical? Because yeah, alkyl just means a carbon chain, and it's a lithium. So this is less a, a name than a description. All right, so this is just a description. All right, 
And um, does anyone know what's an organometallic? Well, these are both organometallics. And do you see how logical that name is? Why are they both organometallics? Because they're carbon things with metals. Yeah, they both. So organo is like alkyl. It just means carbons. So they both have carbons and metals. So these would both be organometallics. It's helpful to have a single name that covers both of them because they react so similarly. These both react so similarly to each other. So these would both be organometallics. OK. Um, and uh, for the most part, I, I can't think of any important difference in how these react that you're going to see this semester anyway. Uh, OK. Uh, so that would give us that. Um, yeah, now we could ask. So uh, that's how we make that. I don't think I put this in that handout, so you might want to add that where we said, so at the bottom of the handout, it shows how to make grignards. We should also know how to make alkyl lithiums. Uh, okay. after, after you make the alkyl lithium, if you want to make a carbon-carbon bond, then you have to add the copper iodide, right? Uh, not necessarily. So let, let's go through that. So, so. Well, I read that alkyl lithiums can't form carbon-carbon bonds. So that's partly right, partly wrong. So let, let's sort that out. Yeah, those are some important ideas. Now, first of all, um, remember everything that this semester, alkyl lithiums will be identical to Grignard's. So I think last time we already discussed what Grignard's can do. Uh, I think we said there's three things they can do. So what are the three things that a Grignard can do this semester? Carbon, carbon, carbon bond. With whom? Carbonyl and then oxycycline. That's right. So those are two of the things. A Grignard can attack a carbonyl or a Grignard can attack an oxycyclopropane. That's right. So... Just as a reminder, a Grignard doesn't have to use bromine. It could use chlorine, chlorine or iodine either. Uh, either. Okay, so. A Grignard could attack a carbonyl. That's something we focused on a lot. This is the most important reaction. Or a green yard could attack a oxycyclopropane, also called an epoxide, also called other names. But it looks like this, a three-membered ring with an oxygen. I'm only showing the first step, because we went through these before. It doesn't before. have to be three-membered. It could be multi-membered. Actually, it does have to be three-membered. Uh, first of all, if it's not three-membered, it's not oxycyclopropane. But it can be oxycyclobutane. It can be butane cancer. Oh, really? I, uh, I didn't know that. I, I don't yeah, think that's right. Yeah, oh, you, you went over that today? Yeah. Okay. The reason I was skeptical of that is... Um, is this normally a good leaving group? No. No. So why is it a why is it a allowable leaving group? Because of the strain. Um, but this is more strain than any other ring. Right. So I'm surprised to hear you can also do this with oxycyclobutane. But but that still does have some strain. So it's not too surprising that maybe you could still use that as a leaving group there. So uh, so if you saw that, I guess that's right. I would still think this reaction would work better because this is so eager yeah. to open because but of the strain. Well, the reason why we had to use the oxycyclobutane was because. They, it was one of those mechanism problems, and the end result had three carbons added, not two. So ah. we had to add the. Ah, interesting. Butane. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's not something that's nearly as important a reaction, but it's good to know. All right. <laughs> and then the third. Uh, yeah, and we also talked about the third as well. So how is the R minus acting here? What what role is it playing? Leaving group, base, nucleophile, nucleophile. How about here? Same. Yeah. What else? What else can the R minus in the Grignard do? What else can it attack? Can attack. Can't it uh, attack normal just alkenes? The other thing that it can do is um, it can act like a base. And what do bases do? E two. They deprotonate things. Bases deprotonate things. Sometimes a base can go through E two. Um, but in general, bases deprotonate things. Uh, and who is easy to deprotonate? Electronegative atoms. So the other thing the green yard can do is deprotonate an electronegative atom, especially oxygens. That's going to be the most common nowadays. But it could be some other electronegative atom uh, as well. Um, and here, this is acting not like a nucleophile, but like a base. Remember, this was the whole reason that we have to keep Grignard's away from protic solvents. The whole reason we have to keep Grignard's away from protic solvents 
is because if you put them in a protic solvent, they would destroy themselves by deprotonating the solvent. Okay, so the whole reason that we put these in ether is so that there aren't any OH groups around. That they so the solution would be... Uh, we're not actually doing a problem right here, we're just kind of reviewing okay. uh, some basic ideas. So um, what we did up here is we saw how to synthesize Grignards and alkylithiums, and now we're talking about what we can do with Grignards, and you can do the same three things with alkylithiums. Remember that this semester there's not going to be any difference between the reactions for Grignards and the reactions for alkylithiums. So you can do the same exact thing down here for alkylithiums. 